knowledge for development. That is the motto of the Nasara State University in Kefi. In the last two decades, it has been the result of the university to provide knowledge that will lead to the social, economic and technological development of the state and the country as a whole. The recent transformation currently ongoing in the institution under the Abdullah Slade led administration speaks volumes. Today on the program. The State University stands today as an eternal monument with clarity of vision. A citadel of learning and an occasion to honor its founding fathers. For the undergraduate program, a total of 24,129 graduates were found worthy in both character and learning. We take a look at events that played out at the sixth combined convocation of the Nassau State University in Kefi. The library has been of indeed great importance to me because whenever I come to the library, the environment alone is very serene. Catch a glimpse of campus students who are grateful for the facility upgrade that continues to aid their learning process. Since I came, I have supported the university from all directions. Plus, an insight into how Governor Abdullah Soleil is placing Nassau State University at a vantage position ahead of other institutions in the region. The Nasara State University Cafe was established in 2001 to cater for the manpower needs of the state. This was due to the paucity of manpower in the state's ministries, departments and agencies. Suleiman Bala Mohammed is the incumbent vice-chancellor and outlined successes of the university in the last two decades. In the last 20 years, we have contributed to manpower development for Nasara State and for Nigeria. As we speak, we started with about three faculties, but we have about eight faculties. We have uh, faculty of administration, we have faculty of agriculture, we have faculty of arts, we have faculty of education, we have faculty of uh, applied and natural sciences, we have faculty of social sciences, we have faculty of environment, and we have faculty of law. And we have more than 60 programs that we graduate uh, students uh, from. We also have a very robust postgraduate school. So we have really trained manpower in the different fields in these faculties that I have listed to you. Some of them have, are working in very high places in Nigeria today and they have contributed their quota to the development of Nigeria. So by and large, I, 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 I want to say with all sense of modesty that we have met the mission and vision of the university, which is actually to train manpower that will contribute to the development of Nigeria. This milestone achievement came to be with the support of successive administration of the state, especially the incumbent governor, Abdullah Suley. The Abdullah Suley administration has done a lot to us. In fact, the management of the university consider him to be a visitor by excellence. A visitor by excellence because since he assumed office, he came with a clear vision to see how he could contribute in uplifting Nasrallah State University. And I want to inform you that there is no program in this university that will organize, and we invite His Excellency that he will not come. In fact, he has, he has given us full official support, including support coming from his person as Abdullah Isfile. The support it enjoyed prompted the university to organize an investiture to celebrate its founding fathers. The investiture, which was part of its 20th anniversary, honored the deserving personalities who brought the institution to stardom. The State University stands today as an eternal monument with clarity of vision, plus focus, courage, and multiplied by commitments. When the university law was in place, we knew that there was no longer going to be anything to hold us back. A lot of people in Abuja prefer actually to drive all the way to come and go to this university because they believe in the curriculum of this university. And I want to call on every one of us who can support in any way you can and ensure that we collectively support this institution. Under the Abdullah Suli's administration, the university made critical gains. One of such is the establishment of the university's printing press, 
to cater for the printing needs of the institution. This was done through a public-private partnership arrangement. The printing press was established through dual operate and transfer, which is a policy that the Abdullah Sula administration has put in place of bringing investors who will put in their resources, build infrastructure, operate it for within a time frame, and then hand it over to the university. We have been able to get people that will enter into that agreement and they have built a printing press. They, they have they brought modern facilities and equipments. I can tell you without fear of contradiction that the printing press we have in Nasrallah State is one of the best in the state. And that we did that through build, operate and transfer. Now that for us is important. It's important because now we no longer take our answer booklets outside to be produced and printed. The answer booklet is a security document. And that if, if you don't produce it from within, you are giving the, the, the opportunity for, for, for all kinds of characters to try to see why they are producing it and get it and then cause examination malpractice. So all our security printing is done within. And that we are also allowing uh, customers to bring printing to the university. Well, the university does a lot of publications, you know, and um, because of the various publications that, that they have, and which is normal, you know, for an institution of that level to be able to do that. You know, that university has a huge population. The reason is a lot of people from Abuja find it more convenient to go to that state university than so many others. So, in fact, today you have huge number you know, of non-resident uh, uh, students than even the resident students that we have in the, in the university. So for that reason, you expect a lot of those kind of activities of their publications and the rest of the so much activities and so many associations all over. And we believe it wouldn't be proper for such university to, for the students to be going out uh, to do this. And for me, I also try to see how we can maximally utilize any facility of ours. So at the state level, you know the problems we are having with our own uh, a, a publishing uh, house. So for that reason, I believe even at the state level, local government level, we can use the same uh, facility. University environment is a place, as an institution that has to do with uh, a lot of printing of books because uh, there is no study without printing. So the printing press is helping the university environment in terms of all the production of uh, books, all the materials the university needs for lecturing and all those things, the textbook of the lecturers and even the school direct, directly is printing uh, the items from the printing press. And it makes it easier because uh, there's a lot of documents that are not supposed to be exposed outside. So having the printing press in the university is a great advantage to the university because everything printed in this place is secured. It's not exposed to outsiders except if there is no need for that then the, 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 the documents can be, I mean, uh, given out. The Abdullah Sule's administration has secured the support of Ted Fund to revitalize the information communication technology needs of the university. This has enabled the university to procure 1,000 computer systems to aid the learning of students in a post-COVID-19 world. In fact, we have done that, and like you rightly observe, the COVID-19 reality has introduced a new normal. And part of that new normal is, uh, is online classes, is uh, lectures that is not physically based where all the students and the lecturers are there. And we, we have done a lot in that regard. In the ICT, part of what I have defined as a key component of my administration is to ensure that we have a robust ICT that will drive teaching, learning, and research. And through Telephone, I'm happy to once again inform you that we have a very big ICT center, very big ICT center. It has more than 1,000 seater capacity. And in that ICT center, we have computers in all the seats. And uh, we have worked a lot to ensure that we have inter campus wide interconnectivity. Uh, before we... now, you know, is uh, the problem of, uh, 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 I think COVID, COVID brought us some of these things where you take advantage of this technology to enhance teaching and learning. So as at that time, the lockdown, we began to think of how to bring some of these classrooms online where the students will, will, 
will uh, 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 take their lectures and possibly have an assessment. Unlike before, where these students have to come down to the, the physical, they have to come down to physical uh, location and uh, have, this, have these classes. Uh, the last semester we did a CBT general uh, uh, GST exams here, where we did uh, all GST courses uh, for all 100 level students uh, and uh, 200 level students. And uh, we hope to continue on that vein to, to, to have their, their uh, online virtual classes here. Behind and around me are over 700 computer systems with free internet access, among other facilities in the ICT center of the institution currently aiding learning of students at the Nasara State University Cafe. Students of the university are happy that the facility has aided their learning process and placed them at the advantage position ahead of the contemporaries from other institutions. Writing just the exams here has been easy, like it doesn't take time. Within 30 minutes, you're done. I think we usually have about 30 questions or thereabouts, and then there's a time for you to write the exam. You can just come in whenever you want to log in and then write your exams, and that's all. Okay, so as a student, I've enjoyed the internet connection when it comes to um, having data. So this ICT center has really served the whole of this school with internet connection. So as a student, sometimes we might have problems with subscribing or buying data because sometimes it's really expensive to purchase this data. Uh, this data. So this ICT center has really served the whole of our school with internet connection. So it has made it very easy for us to do our work, our online research, anything we want to do at all concerning computer or IT as a whole. So because you know when you don't really have uh, this internet connection, it will be very difficult for you to make some research. So you will be very mindful of the site you visit or the content in, t in which you exploit. So this uh, ICT center has really done its work by serving us with unlimited internet connection. So I really appreciate the ICT center for that. Because normally after your fee, you'll be given your password to have access to the internet connection. So you can easily do whatever you want, basically. Mm. So I recommend ICT for that. Well, it has really, we have used it in so many ways. There are research we do on uh, Python programming. Since Python is actually coming up now, is actually leading in the programming language. There are things we have, have been able to get researching on this Python programming. The university library has in recent times undergone automation. This is to ensure adequate provision of electronic books and other materials to aid the learning of staff and students. Now, in terms of structure, we have a very big library. In terms of content, I can also assure you that we have, we have enough materials, both classical materials and, and contemporary or recent materials. We also have an e-library section there where we subscribe to, 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 to different uh, 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 information bases in the different faculties. And that if you go there through the e-platform, you can access materials, you can access books. I want to, I want to inform you that our library is, is very good. In fact, our library has supported the accreditation exercises that we have gone through. And I want to inform you that there is no program in this university that is not accredited. And there is no program that can be accredited if the library is not so good enough. For students of the Nasara State University Cafe, the ambience, the conducive environment, and the vast collection of books in this library has afforded them the opportunity to study properly and carry out their research works. We have vital information that students might have not laid their hands on it, maybe due to the hard uh, economic situation, they may not have the money to buy all the resources, so the library supports them with this information to ease their learning and to help the lecturers teach them very well. So it is probably for academic support. And uh, these materials, we have sources that we get them. 
we have the state government used to sponsor some sources and the university management, most especially during accreditation, we get funds from the university to acquire some uh, materials, books, and other resources like computers, uh, like printers for academic purpose. The university library also offers binding services for students at a subsidized rate. Uh, we have binary services that are some of the books that are turned due to the frequent usage by students. We used to amend them and uh, put new covers so that to revive them, to put them to use. And even uh, like uh, students' projects, we used to bind them here uh, at affordable price so that to help them and so that they can have quality projects that they, they will in turn uh, submit them to the faculties and they still put them to use. As you can see, we have boundary machines and a lot of them, and we have staff that are mining it. Sandy Andrew and Taiwo John are postgraduate students of the university. They share their thoughts on how the library has been aiding their research works. As a student of NAS, Tara State University student, the library has been of indeed great importance to me because whenever I come to the library, the environment alone is very serene. It gives me makes me feel comfortable and whenever I pick any book from the library I'll be able to assimilate very well and as you can see in the library there are a lot of very very rich books that help me in my field whenever I come I get a lot of materials indeed there are lots of materials here that help me in my study. It has helped me greatly both when it comes to knowledge I gain if I gain a lot, a lot of knowledge in this library and also when it comes to research it's also a lot in terms of research, in terms of when even a lecturer gives us an assignment and when you check it online, don't see it, just come to the library and see it there. In its quest to continue to fulfill the mandate of manpower provision, the university in 2020 set the ball rolling for the commencement of the Faculty of Engineering and the School of Medicine. It is making steady progress and hopeful that the programs would commence in the next academic section. Other projects such as the new Senate building and the Faculty of Engineering Workshop Complex in Goody have reached advanced stage, courtesy of the Abdullah Sudeh's administration. The governor is happy with the milestone achievement of the university. The university is one of the legacy projects, you know, that uh, we will continue to mention for the, our first civilian administrator, Abdullah Adamu. Uh, I, have said it, I have said it many times and everywhere and to whoever would like to listen to. One of the greatest things Abdullah Adamu has done to this state is actually that university. When I was working as the managing director of African Petroleum and later managing director of, Afri of uh, uh, Tangwati uh, uh, Sugar Refinery, you know, we found actually graduates of that uh, university, you know, very, very, very competent people that we could train. They were very trainable. They had the basics and it was easy to train them, you know. So, and we found that, uh, I found that highly commendable. I was one of those from the beginning when I returned from the U.S. in early 2000, you know, and then I heard about the university coming up. I was one of those that criticized the university, just like I criticized the airport also, you know, while I was in the private sector. You know, but I now come to realize, you know, and uh, that that university has actually done more good for Nasrallah State than that. And for that reason, since I came, I have supported the university from all directions. You know, even during the COVID uh, 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 challenges, the COVID period challenges that we have had, we decided from here, with the little resources we had, to continue to pay the salaries of the university instead of giving them their monthly uh, allowance. It's the sixth combined convocation of the university. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is a special guest of honor and takes a procession alongside the state governor Abdullah Suley and other academic authorities. The university is graduating 34,000 students who have successfully completed their programs. For the undergraduate program, a total of 24,129 graduates were found worthy in both character and learning to be awarded first degree in various disciplines for which they were trained in the 2016-17, 2017-18, 2018-19, 2019-20, 2020-21, 2021-22, 2022-23, 2023-24, 2024-25, 2025-26, 2026-27, 2027-28, 2028-29, 2029-30, 2030-31, 2031-32, 2032-33
2019-20 academic sessions. Out of this number, a total of 130 graduated with first class degree. 5,014 had second class upper. 15,749 had second class lower. 2,926 had third class, while 81 had past degree. We have the privilege to witness the award of postgraduate students who have distinguished themselves in both character and learning. A total of 10,034 will be awarded doctorate, academic masters, professional masters, and postgraduate diploma degrees for the four academic sessions. The breakdown shows that 611 completed their doctorate program, 3,215 completed academic masters, 3,432 completed professional masters, and 2,000 776 completed postgraduate uh, diploma programs. I congratulate you all on behalf of the visitor, council, principal officers, senate, staff, and all the stakeholders of the university. The vice president wants the graduates to be innovative and take advantage of ICT to achieve their desired goals. What will set you apart as you journey forward is how far you are willing to dream and how much work you are willing to put in. You belong to the most advanced generation in human history, a generation that's not bound by the rigid conventions of the past, a generation that is unafraid to ask questions, one that has inherited centuries of human innovation and advancement. And so you know much more than your predecessors, much more than those of us who are sitting on this stage, that there is nothing impossible to accomplish in the face of persistent, innovative, and collaborative effort. Many of you who are here today are digital natives, heirs of artificial intelligence, robotics, 3D printing, nanotechnology, and quantum computing. You know firsthand the wide-ranging opportunities of digital and mobile technology, the disruptions in logistics and global supply chains that have allowed for cheaper and more effective trade while opening up new markets and spurring economic growth around the world. The Nassau State Governor is committed to supporting the mission and the vision of the university. It is pertinent to state that my engagement so far with the university management team clearly demonstrates unparalleled commitment to the development and growth of the institution. Our administration will continue to support the university in order to provide enabling environment and resources to facilitate the attainment of the noble mission and vision of the university as was conceived by the founders of this institution. I assure you that this administration will work assiduously with the chancellor, the university governing council, the vice chancellor and his management team with a view to addressing some of the challenges in this institution. On issues of funding, let me confirm that with the improved IGR that we continue to witness, government is working out a bailout template to ensure that the university staff are paid by Nasarawa state government. We must, however, remind ourselves that government alone can not shoulder the burden of funding institutions such as this because of the capital nature. Therefore, all hands must be on deck to support government in the provision of quality education. The convocation ceremony was climaxed with the award of honorary degree cashiers to deserving personalities in the country. There were deliberate steps uh, taken by the government to make sure that the business environment is sanitized. The first step was actually making the political will to address the challenges being faced in the business environment. Uh, and that first step was taken by making it uh, a major and integral part of the policy of this administration as contained in the Nasarawa Economic Development Strategy. So ease of doing business uh, was made a big deal by the government and a lot of steps uh, were itemized to be taken. And one of uh, such major steps is the creation of a one-stop shop 
uh, and that one-stop shop has been created, which is the Nasarawa Investment and Development Agency, NACIDA. Uh, NACIDA plays a hand-holding role for businesses to help them go through uh, all the processes and procedure for doing business in Nasarawa State. We help them manage uh, their business experience in Nasarawa State. We have also, through NACIDA, been able to create a very robust feedback mechanism uh, with the business community in Nasarawa State. Uh, we, are, we are their own champions. Uh, another major reforms that we've seen in the state's business environment, especially as it relates to interface with regulatory bodies, is uh, digitization of these processes. Uh, in our major institutions, like the National Geographic Information Service, the National Urban Development Board, the Nasarawa Internal Revenue Service. Uh, the processes in these institutions have all been digitized. Uh, the information and data for obtaining the permits and licenses that these institutions provide have been digitized. The information uh, you can find, uh, you can access very easily. Uh, this wasn't the case uh, in the past. Um, businesses can also register uh, for their business permit with ease. And these are some of the major problems that we've tried to solve over the past three years under the Nasarawa Enabling Business Environment Council. And that's our packet from the Solid Mineral State, where Governor Abdullah Soleil is meeting the aspirations of the people and exceeding all expectations. Until the next one, it's bye for now.